Hey, hey y'all, how are ya? This is Casey Hope from Pizzazz Art Studio and we are back again for our afternoon art lesson. Today, we once again have a very similar, um, similar supplies to what we have every day, which is watercolor paper. Okay, so I've got my watercolor paper. I've got my pencil and eraser. I've got a permanent black pen. And today I've got my Crayola washable markers. I've got the super tips. Now, I have had some people say, does it matter if it's the super tips? Well, no, you can have any of the washable markers, um, any of the Crayola washable markers or any washable markers in general. Um, one reason I like super tips, there's a few different reasons, but one of them is because you can get the 50 pack and it comes with so many colors. So for like example, these two kind of pastel -y colors don't always come in a traditional, you know, eight pack of markers or something. So, um, so that's just one of the reasons we love the super tips, but any washable, markers will do. All right, so here we go. Happy camper. Now let me tell you something. This right here is, um, it is a little bit harder than some of our pictures. And I wouldn't say harder necessarily, but more steps. There's just more steps, okay? So when there's more steps, you kind of, your attention can sometimes be like, oh my gosh, this is too much. <laughs> so if you feel like that, just pause it and come back to it. Um, I'm going to just break it down one shape at a time. All right, so here we go. I'm going to move, well, first of all, let me talk to you about this. You see, we see we're gonna start with what we know, which is kind of a circle, okay? We always start with shapes that we know. Then we see that there is a shape above it, and then this long shape right here that kind of looks like a rectangle, okay? So those are the shapes that we are going to, um, to start with. All right, so let me move this out of the way. I've got my pencil. I will be going um, kind of light with my pencil. If you want to letter, you don't have to letter, but if you want to letter, you need to at least think about where you want to place your tire because you don't want it all the way down here. You might want it here if you're going to letter. All right, so I'm going to very lightly go ahead and do my circle with another smaller circle inside. I'm going to pause for just a second in between steps to give you a second to do it. But again, if I get to going faster than you are, no big deal. You might just wanna just stop and watch me and then come back later to do it if I get too fast. All right, so then I'm gonna kinda of come as two little lines over to the side, little bitty lines, and then we're gonna connect that all the way above here, okay? All right, next up, we are going to go right here. We're gonna go back just a little bit. And then this is going to be a shape that's gonna, like here's this line, it jumps over and it's gonna go as long as you want this camper to be, okay? So I'm gonna stop about right there. I'm not gonna go to the end of the page. All right, now you see where this line is? We're gonna jump over and extend. Now, um, also let me mention this. If you have got, because we have got our local um, YMCA, they might be using some of these videos. If you've got a local group that has got kids that need something to do, they, you are welcome to share any of our free videos with them. We've got them here on the Facebook page and we also have some of them the same ones we try to upload um, to YouTube. So feel free. Um, we don't ever want you to like re-teach our stuff necessarily for profit, but if you have got a group of kids, um, if you've got a classroom or whatever that would benefit from any of our free lessons, feel free to totally um, to share that with them. Um, all right, <clears throat> so now we are going to draw the shape of the camper. So we're gonna start right here. We're gonna kind of go up. Went over and then around. Oh, I did mine a little bit too big. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna do it a little bit shorter right there. Okay. All right, so go ahead and draw the shape. If you do something, if you mess up a little bit, no big deal, just erase it. I kind of got mine a little too big, so I corrected it and I'm gonna erase it. That's one of those reasons why we um while we do it lightly. 
I'm going to maybe change the shape just a little bit too. I saw somebody that just asked, can we do a horse? Well, let me tell you, so this, we will continue. We will have a couple of classes um, tomorrow and Sunday. After that, next week, we are not going to have our the daily lessons like this because our kids club is starting. So most, a lot of our attention is going to be inside there. What you see me doing right here is just kind of getting my shape like I like it, tweaking a few things. You do not have to do this. Um, but we will go live next week, Tuesday and Thursday. If you want to, uh, if you have not signed up for the kids club and you want to be a part of that, we will put a link in the comments. So now we're going to do a curve for the door. So we're going to start right here and just curve it around. All right, then we're going to do a fun, you don't have to do a heart. If a heart looks too girly for you, you can do a circle, but we're just gonna, I'm gonna do a little heart right there for that window. And then a circle over here for the doorknob. So do you see how, even though this has more steps, it's definitely, um, it's still shape, okay? It's totally doable, totally doable. Now we are going to do just a, a rectangle for the window, okay? And, I, and when I do a rectangle, I don't want the edges to be too harsh. I want them to be a little bit rounded, just a little bit, like soft. So I'm doing the rectangle with soft corners, okay? And then I will do like a, um, like the curtains, to me, I think of it almost like an R. It looks like an R right here. And this looks like a backwards R almost. And then you can put like a plus sign in between for the window. So that's the, the easy way to do those little curtains. So we've got the rectangle, the regular R, the backwards R, and that plus sign. So we are going to do this little line that goes across. Now notice it's made up of two lines. It's a bottom line. And it goes all the way across and then a top line. If you make those too close together, it's gonna be really skinny. If you make them too far apart, it's gonna be really fat. So I'm doing a straight line. When I hit this, I'm gonna jump over it. Jump over it. I'm still kind of doing an imaginary line through here. I've got one. Now I'm just gonna do another one right on top. If I hit the door, I'm gonna jump over. Okay, so we've got this now. We're just gonna go whoop, whoop. This is just a little extra. You don't have to add it. If that's too much fluff for you, just leave that part off. You don't have to have it, okay? But it's just, if you want it, it's just whoop, 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 just like that. Okay, now we are going to do our fun little flags. So I'm going to do just a curve like this. And you could stop there and just have them here, or you can do it here and have it going across the whole thing. Either way is fine. So it's just one line and then another. And then we're gonna put V's on here, okay? The V's are gonna be flags when we're done. If they overlap any of this window, it's okay. Okay, so we'll just erase. V, V, and that one kinda goes off. All right, so we just did those V's. If there's anything that's overlapping, just erase. Okay. And you have got the basics of your drawing. Now, if you want to go ahead and add in your curves right here, like curve, curve, curve. This again, it was just a little extra details that we added at the end. If that's too much for you, you don't have to do it. But if you want to add a little something, something, there is that. All right. Oh, I got you, Mackenzie. Yes, we did do one. We did do a bunny. All right, so... Okay, now we're going to take our Sharpie and we are going to start outlining things. So there's some little details um, that we added on after, like that are that I didn't draw with pencil. They're just extra little details, and I'll show you that too. But right now it's just this Sharpie time. As we're tracing the Sharpie, I'll um, again tell you a little bit about the kids club so the way it's designed is every monday we are going to release new videos in your library okay so the first two weeks we are focusing on watercolor we'll pull in some um, oil pastels in there sometimes too so we'll focus on watercolor we, we release that on monday but you can do it anytime you want then on wednesday 
we have a creative challenge. Now this creative challenge is to get you thinking outside the box a little bit because our lessons are very explicit and we think it's important to teach you explicit things and it's important for you to think on your own a little bit. So on those challenges, it might be turn, you know, a cereal box into a piece of art, <laughs> or it might be go outside and draw what you see, or it might be, we might give you a crazy line and see how many of you can turn that line into something and see how many different ideas we get from that. So it's just different little, doesn't take a lot of time, but creative challenges every Wednesday. So you've got something released on Monday and then Wednesday. Every once in a while, you might have some bonuses thrown in there too. And then on Fridays, we are picking a Pizzazz Kids rock star. And that is somebody, it's not who has the best art, but it's somebody who has been participating, been doing the lessons, been posting their pictures inside the kids club so that we can see. Um, and then we're gonna do like a little fun little interview with them and display them and their art on our main pizzazz page so that you can share with your friends and family um, that you are the pizzazz rock star. So that's a little bit about, um, about how it's set up. But also, in addition to just those lessons and the creative challenge, we are doing some uh, like artist studies. We, we're learning about Wayne Tebow next month and also some lettering. I mean, it's so much good stuff. All right, so now we are going to go back in and just add detail. We've outlined everything with our marker and now we're gonna go back in and add some detail. All right, so I'm gonna do like straight lines, well dot, dot, straight lines, dot, 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 just to add a little extra, okay? Again, it's not a have to, it's just sometimes I will look at a drawing and just think it needs a little bit of pizzazz. I mean, do you know what I mean? It needs a little pizzazz. And so <laughs> little bitty lines like this sometimes help. Okay, around the heart, if you want to do these little lines. So lines, dots, dashes, those are easy ways to add some pizzazz. Dots above here. And then on the um, on the curtains, you could do polka dots, or you could do like a, um, like how we have here in the sample, where we've got little cross hatchy stuff. These are just lines, and the lines going the other way. And that's it, folks. You have drawn the camper, okay? So not too hard at all. Um, we drew it, we broke it down to simple shapes, we outlined it with our Sharpie, added a few little details for some pizzazz. Next up, we are going to, um, to letter, and that's if you want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I'm gonna put a few little lines in here just because it feels like it's missing something. But if you want to, you might want to start with a your pencil first. You don't have to, but sometimes that makes people feel a little bit more comfortable. And we are just doing, and you can just kind of watch me. It's If you can draw, you can letter. Lettering is just drawing. So it's not your handwriting. It's how you form, you know, how you put lines together. So we're going to do two straight lines. And then a curve going through it. And then you've got an H, okay? A line and a line, a line and a curve. So when you start thinking about it like that, I know I'm going a little bit fast on this part. <clears throat> when you start thinking about it as lines and shapes, it's not too hard at all. I'm gonna do a big C, a line and a curve, a line, curve, curve, line, curve. Do you see? It's just drawing, okay? Lettering is drawing. All right, after you get that down there, then you can trace this. I would love to hear, has anybody been camping during this time of quarantine? I got a, a picture from my friend in Birmingham that they were backyard camping and they had the tent set up and they were in the backyard. I saw another friend of mine post, um, they had their RV just in the driveway, but they were like, well, we'll just 
spend the night in the driveway just for a little something different. <laughs> so um, I'd love to hear if anybody has been camping. Oh, we also have some friends. We've done this picture before and we've seen them take these pictures and put them in their camper, which looks really cute. All right, if you wanna add a serifs, these are just these little lines kind of on the ends of your letter, you can. Just little lines. Okay, and you could be done, or if you wanted to thicken up some of those down strokes, you could totally do that as well. So I'll show you kind of me thickening the down strokes. In addition to our kids club, we do have our lettering club open for a couple of more days. We are actually, actually starting today, we are starting to pack our happy mail for the lettering club. So after that's all packed, we won't be able to accept any more people in for this month. Um, but we usually only open that lettering club once a quarter, but there are so many people at home that could use the benefits of that club. So we did open it up, that's more for adults. We did open that up. Um, and like I said, it's open up probably for another day or so for this month because we have got to get everything packed and shipped because we are a little bit afraid that we're about to get shut down <laughs> as far as um, being able to go down there and get stuff done. Okay, so I've got my, my drawing, my uh, Sharpie, my lettering. If you want to go ahead and do some polka dots, you can. I'm gonna draw it with my uh, pencil just to kind of get my feeling. Remember, um, they can, don't have to be complete polka dots. They can be half dots. Sometimes it's just necessary because you can't fit a complete dot on the page. All right, so there is that. So how's everybody hanging in there? Okay, I told y'all it's a few more steps than normal, but I'm pretty confident that you can do it. Yes, you've got to stay focused a little bit more, um, but it's going to be so cute in the end. And if you need to take a break, you can always just take a break right here. You can be like, okay, I've had enough. and we'll come back and do color later. But I'm going to go ahead and do my color. So with color, you've seen, you may have seen me do the um, Crayola to the watercolor technique before. Nothing has changed. I'm going to do it the same way I always do. One thing that's important before you start going is just to kind of pick your um, your color scheme before you go, uh, just so you kind of know what you're working with. So to begin with, I was like, okay, I know I want yellow and pink and green. And I thought these were going to be the only colors. And then as I started going, I was like, well, you got to do a little bit of blue in the window and that bottom needs something else so i threw the purple in but at least they all kind of go together I, it would be distracting if i use these kind of pastel -y colors and then brought in a dark red or dark blue or something so you want to kind of choose your colors before you get rolling with it um tiny says how much is the lettering club it is 35 dollars a month that includes all the online instruction. And with that, we also send happy mail to your doorstep every single month. So we send supplies and scripture cards and um, traceables, lettering traceables, all of that. So that's what we are going to do actually right in a moment. <laughs> as soon as I get off of this, we are headed to the studio. We've already started packing boxes. Um, some of our girls are gonna come in. They can't work at the studio, but we're gonna give them a few things to start sorting at home and people are gonna start putting those packages together. And then I guess it's just gonna be me and my husband and the kids actually doing the boxes this month, which is a little bit crazy because usually we have a team of people. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, we gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, so you see that I took my yellow and I just scribbled it in. Remember, we do wanna have a good amount of what we got that markery pigment you don't want to just use your fine tip, but we scribble that in. Now I'm going to go to my green. I'm just going to kind of use the side, scribble it in. As a reminder, you don't do this. You don't use the tip and barely put any on there. It's not going to work if you do, okay? So you got to get it like this. And then while I've got the green, I'm going to go ahead and do several things that I want to be green. So I'm going to do every other flag with my green and give me some pink 
go ahead and do every other, this tip got stepped on or something, every other flag with the pink. Remember, it's just a scribbly scribble in. You can trace over this if you want it to be color, and then when you add water, it'll get a little bit thicker. A little bit of our purple here. Blue in the window. And then we'll go ahead, I should've done the purple while it was in my hand. We'll do the purple down here for this. Now we do have the black tire, but I'm gonna do that after all of the everything else because I don't want my water to get too terribly dirty. All right, so here we go. I am going to start adding water. I'm gonna get my brush and some water and I'm gonna start with my yellow. I like to start with that light color before my water gets dirty. So I'm starting with the yellow, just kind of loosening it up. I'm gonna move my water cup over here so I'm not reaching across the screen every time. I'm gonna try not to get too terribly close to the heart because I don't want those colors to bleed once I add the color there. Here, I'll do the other yellow. Rinse that brush. Now I'll come to my greens. From here on out, there's not really a rhyme or reason as to what color I go to, but I do stick with all the colors. So if I'm doing green right now, I'll do all the greens. Just loosening it up with my water brush. Now, if you're not using watercolor paper, this these watercolors don't always react like this, okay? Uh, what brand of markers are you using, Lori asked. We are using Crayola Washable, um, the Super Tips. Uh, also, Crayola also has a pack of like bold colors that are really pretty too, but they always have to be washable, washable, washable. All right, now on this pink right here, we're going to kind of go around this and see how it just thickens it up just a little bit and just kind of gives it a light wash of color. I'm rinsing my brush in between. Every time I change colors, I'm rinsing that brush. Um, Deanna said, I missed the beginning. Will y'all show this again? Yep, we sure will. So once we are done with this, it will be in the replay. So you totally can still see it. Okie doke. So most of that is done. I'm going to go ahead and do my pink in the background, my pink dots. So I'm just going to circle and remember they don't have to, oh my goodness, I'm about, this thing is about, oh! Okay, this is not the fault of the marker. This would be the fault of my children for stepping out. Somebody at the beach, when we were at the beach, <laughs> stepped on our markers. Oh no, okay. So we're gonna try to, to finish this out with a broken tip of a marker. <laughs> I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Cause I do not have time to look through all my markers to find this color and I don't wanna use the red. And I, if, I, if I had not started, I would just change colors completely. But after already having one broken, I mean, one um, color on there. I need to keep going. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wet these down first before I add my yellow. So I'm gonna come in here just with a little. Now you may see I'm using two different sizes of paintbrushes, that's not a have to. Um, I just like to, sometimes when I have bigger areas and I want to go a little faster, I will use a bigger brush. So I, I have been using two different sizes, but it's, it's definitely not a must. Oh, yay. Amy said that they got some Crayola Super Tips markers from Grocery Pickup. That's awesome. Was that like at Walmart? We just did, um, we used Shipped. Um, if y'all, if anybody uh, has those, they're great, the Ship Shoppers. If anybody needs a code, I do have a code um, to get $50 off. But um, the Ship Shoppers uh, are great too. They, um, we just had a delivery too. We're like, okay, we gotta get this stocked up. So yeah, Amy, let us know which grocery pickup. Uh, that's a very good little tip to know. All right, so we've got that on there. If you want the yellow in the background, 
I did not do yellow everywhere. I only did it around the kind of on the corners, okay? So, I'm still using the thick part of my marker and just kind of doing it on the edges. But once it turns to the watercolor, it's gonna, it's gonna spread beyond just the edges, but that's primarily where I'm putting this color. Okay, so now I am for sure gonna be using my big brush on this one. So I just got a round, this is a round size 14 brush that I'm gonna be using. And then here's what you gotta be careful of. You gotta be careful that it does not touch your pink circles, okay? Because if it does, then it starts bleeding. So what I'm gonna do is I really just kind of keep touching my water and keep smearing it until it runs, like until it fades out off naturally, okay? So I'll kind of touch this, pull it in. Don't let it touch the, um, the dots too much. You can go right on top of your um, watercolor of your, I'm sorry, not your watercolor, your Sharpie. That's why we use Sharpie. And we'll come do our tire last. So this is just such a fun, quick way to add color. Okay, and then the last little bit I'm gonna do is gonna be with our black. And with this, I'm not gonna put too much because what you don't want to happen is you do not want um, this to be like the, the focal point. You don't want it to be so dark and black that it's like, dun, 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 there's a black circle in the middle, okay? You don't want that. You just want a few little lines and that'll be plenty. I'm gonna go to my smaller brush, kind of loosen it up. Y'all see that? So that black is very strong. And then I'll just do like a few little lines in here. Okie dokie, that is about it. I'm trying to look back at the original. The only other thing that I see that we did on the original and not on this was we did do a few little lines like around the window and stuff. Um, but that is it, y'all. So I hope um, I hope you hung in there with us. Uh, if Even if you took a break, I hope you kind of come back to it. Uh, this was a few more steps than some of our pictures, but I think it's really cute. And I know you are going to do a great job with it. And here's the deal. If you, um, if you don't like it, guess what? Just try it again and try it again and do it until you like it, okay? I can't tell you how many times we have um, d done something over and over and over again at the studio before we ever let you see it, seriously. Like if you look at our planning days, we, me and Haley will sit at the studio and we will plan and we will paint and there are so many things that we're like, nope, we gotta redo that, we gotta redo it. That's, that is part of the process. So don't get mad at yourself. If you don't love the first one you draw, um, Drew, just do it again. And uh, let me know if you've got any questions and we will see you soon. See ya, see ya. <laughs>